Hi, everyone. This is Alexander Cardos with the Alexander News Show with iHeart Podcast Network, also Spotify. Check out Alexander News Show on all my platforms for social media. Okay, all the information is in this video. And also, we're on pod, most podcast platforms, mainly Spotify and also iHeart Podcast Network. And to my left is perhaps the next Council member for seat six for the town of Miami Lakes, Florida. The election, the special election is on Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. And before I go any further, please, for the YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen, please subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications, okay? And again, this is Alexander Carlos, and to my left is... Mr. John Ruger, how you doing, sir? I'm good doing. How you doing uh, today? It's a really nice uh, day out today. It's been a wonderful uh, weekend, and this is exciting. We're getting close to the election. Absolutely, sir. Hey, by the way, is there a number that the people need to punch? Yes, absolutely. Number 74 is my number it, when you choose to choose me. And number 74 is going to be the number that you punch in your mail-in ballot or on April 9th when we do the election. Remember, there is not going to be any early voting in this election. It is a one day only event. So if you didn't get a mail in ballot, you have to show up at one of the locations on April the 9th. Fortunately, I put them up all on my website. So if you go to vote John Roger, that's what two G's dot com, you can go there and see where all the different places are where your precincts will be. That's your website, right? Yes, vote John Roger.com. Okay. And, and ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, all of the information for Mr. John Roger is going to be below this video. Okay. And Mr. John Roger, again, special election Tuesday, April 9. Uh, you're vying for the town council seat six. And let's get to the questions, okay? Sure. First of all, in your list of priorities, what do you mean by preserving our small town charm? Well, thank you for your question. So what I wanted to say is that I came from a small town myself. A lot of people, you know, that are running in this race or people that know everyone, uh, they're all from Miami Lakes. I moved into Miami Lakes in 2020. In fact, I moved to Country Club in 2017 and was working in Miami Lakes with the Special Needs Advisory Board. But um, when I moved here, I moved here for my family and I moved from a small town in Missouri where we had about the same population and we worked as a family unit. Each city, each representative, each chamber of commerce, we all worked together because we wanted to see our area thrive, but to remain this special place. And when I've met everybody here in town in Miami Lakes, this is the same feeling, the same vibe goes on in this area where we're, we're family. We own local businesses. We know each other. We walk into the same parks and we don't want to lose that because that's a gem that we have here in this portion of Miami-Dade County. Most of the cities down here have become these mega conglomerate cities. They've got businesses everywhere. They've got five, six story buildings. They've got every shopping center you can have. And then you can't find that little main street like you have here. There's only a few cities left in South Florida that have those ones. We do, we're lucky enough to have that. So to me, that means making sure we're doing responsible growth. You know, we're running out of town space here. We can't be building 500,000 more buildings. We can't be building seven story buildings because we have an airport nearby, you know? Yeah. Uh, so we've reached a point where we need to evaluate what's our green spaces left and, and use it appropriately to preserve this town. That also goes into taking care of our tree canopy. I have talked to several people in my walks around town so far who are very concerned about the way our tree canopy and our beautiful town is being handled. We had this great plan, Alex. Um, they came up with this idea to do the Growing Beautifully a couple of years ago in the council. And the plan was to revitalize the trees, take down the bad ones, plant some new ones. And you know what's happened? They've done it. And they haven't maintained it. Well, I see you go drive down Miami Lake Way, drive down a few of these uh, different side roads. You'll see there are trees dying. No one's wow. following up with it. So we need to make sure that we're following up with it. That Who's should be a priority. Water that? What's, is it Miami-Dade County or is it the town of Miami Lakes? The to town of Miami Lakes. It's our responsibility. So we're okay. supposed to be working on that. And so that's part of the thing I see about you know preserving our small town is making sure little things. Our roads are taken care of. They're striped properly. You go down some of them right now. There's no striping. You have no idea where you're going at night. And then there's sidewalks that have been buckled up due to some of the trees that we have. We don't need to get rid of the trees. We need to fix the sidewalk. Let's get in there, fix the sidewalk, and make sure we're doing it right so that that doesn't happen again. That's what you mean by 
preserving our small town charm. So let me ask you this other question. What do you mean by safety first as in your list of priorities you put here safety first? So safety to me is in paramount for our community. We have a great relationship with the Miami-Dade Police Department. Um, we connected with them and they basically patrol our area. Uh, some people have suggested that it's time the town builds our own police department. I do not believe that is a smart idea. Having the connection with Miami-Dade Police is critical because they offer resources that our own town building our own department cannot Possibly. What are, one of, what, are, what are some of those resources? Well, the resources, you know, for example, let's say something something serious happens here, right? They can have dozens of officers here. We only have a couple of officers. You know, we can only afford a couple of officers if we had our own department. But, but you've got the Northwest Center where all of the Miami-Dade police officers reside. Over right here in my Millex. Uh, district. Yeah, the district. They're all here in a minute. So if something happens in one of our schools, we have officers here in minutes. Not, oh, hey, he's on his lunch break. You know, because that's what happens when you have a when you have your own town department and you only have a few officers. The other thing is, is the officers we do have through Miami Dade, they don't have enough resources, and we're a little short staffed on the amount of people we've hired because we cut the budget back. I don't believe that was a wise choice to cut them. Now, I did say at the debate that it's a wise choice to keep the taxes low. And we're in an inflation year. There's a lot of people struggling and barely making it, especially with the really, really ridiculously high prices we have for insurance right now, thanks to Tallahassee. But there are other ways we can get money for that police department to be able to do what it needs to do, to give Miami-Dade police a better contract. Because we can reach out to, there's grant writers for law enforcement. There's law enforcement programs that can help give us what we need. The LPRs that we use, these are the license plate, license plate readers that we have. They have helped us catch criminals in every area of the I was, town. I was reading that. What, what, what kind of, what kind of, um, what difference will it make if you have a license place reader in the town of Miami Lakes? Well, I think about this. Okay, so every car that's going by, right? These license plate readers look at the license plate. And if that plate has been reported as stolen or reported in an accident or reported in a theft or reported in a crime, it immediately alerts Miami Dade Police and says, hey, this person's here. You need to come check them out. Yeah. And it, you know what? There's been argument. Is this violating any rules is it privacy issues some towns across the country have said no to these programs but since we've implemented them here and a lot of the ones that have been implemented by the way are implemented in our gated communities and they're using them to track people that go in so you don't have to stop and wait at the gate for an hour and try to get your way in it's happening right now. so it's actually a good tool and it's it's useful um, and one last thing about safety first, if for those who know about our special needs advisory board, and I chaired the board for three years, I've been on the board for six years. One of the uh, programs that we developed was a spe the special needs safety program. It's a one-on-one -on -one program with the Miami-Dade Police Department that allows us to let uh, them know about people with special needs in our town. And we give wow. everybody a sticker. We give everybody a little band. It what doesn't matter if you're Down syndrome, autism, elderly, uh, if you have dementia, this goes in to a private record it cannot be requested by sunshine they, these are the only the people that know it are miami-dade police officers and our town officers wow. and this safety program is one of the core reasons i want to focus on safety is it allows our residents who need help to get the help without being afraid or being or, or getting into a situation where they're triggered because they don't they're not they we don't think in the same way neurological differences are huge and they are happening every day and so now our police department knows hey this person doesn't like sirens hey this person doesn't like the flashing lights they can approach it from a different pers perspective and towns across south florida now have been copying our design that we came up with and i am interviewing again john. mr john roger candidate for the town of miami lakes Special election, seat six, council seat six. And my question is in regards to transparency and community engagement. What do you mean by that? What is, as your priority? Well, uh, let me talk about a little bit about, I mentioned earlier in the video that I'm from Missouri. And in Missouri, you know, I worked 20, almost 15, 20 years as a news director. And we would bring in, and we, 
uh, the towns. We had five, six major towns that comprised our about 50, 60,000 people over the course of the entire region, over three counties. And we would bring them into the radio station and we'd have them, we'd have them talk. We'd have the commissioners, we'd have the mayors, the what we call Board of Aldermen, but their town councils down here in South Florida. And we'd have them come in and talk about what they're working on. So the citizens had an idea of what was being done in the town. And these leaders down there as well, when they had a change, let's say they had to raise water and sewer rates, let's say they're going to expand a road, they didn't just go and do it, or they didn't propose it and then hold a, a quick meeting and then, and then vote for it, like they do down here. They held one or two town hall meetings, and they showed and proposed everything that's being done to the people, the residents of the town, getting their input before they went and then started doing the votes on what needs to be done to have it done. And I've heard people on our own council, one of my, one of my friends is Lewis and Lewis has been on the council for a while. And I remember him sitting in one council meeting saying something that I thought was absolutely perfect. He said, God forbid we do a workshop for the public. And he meant that sarcastically because the council doesn't seem to do a lot of workshops and it needs to. So when it comes to transparency, in my opinion, if we're going to do something, we're going to fix the trees, we're going to fix a road, we want to raise rates, we want to lower rates, it doesn't matter what it is. If we're going to do it, we need to hold some meetings with our constituents. Our residents need to come in and get to know what's going on. And I want to make sure that that's done. If the rest of the board members don't want to do it, fine. If I have to do it myself, I'll do it myself. I don't care because, in my opinion, it's more important for you guys, you residents, to know what we're doing before we start doing it. Because right now, it's people come in, the next council meeting, they get three minutes to talk and complain about where did this come from? And then the council's like, okay, thanks for your opinion. And they go on and vote. I don't want that happening when I'm in there. You know, would you do, would you do something more like, um, would you be open to doing something more like some commissioners in Miami-Dade County? Um, they do like a meeting at a, at a certain park, maybe like once a week. Would you do something like that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, doing like special office hours or, or, yeah, or attending around. Do, yeah. Cause I have, there's certain commissioners that have done, I'm not going to mention the commissioner's name, <laughs> but they have done where they'll meet, uh, people of the public at a certain park the second Saturday of each month or something like that. Is that something you would do? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good idea. I mean, if it's something, if it's something just a regular time to meet to talk about what we're doing in the town, I would love to go around like, like a coffee one with one. John, you know, okay, yeah. just do coffee with John. I love that. But, but when it comes to a real serious thing, you know, if we're going to do something to talk about the park, right? Uh, Optimus park, or we're talking about the bridge. We're talking about the one five, four bridge. We're talking about tree improvements. That I think needs to be done in town hall. And I, I know not only does the, it, do we need to be there, but we need to have everything set up so that you guys can come and visit town hall and come into the meeting and be able to see, okay, this is what we're working on. Here's what we're looking at. Here's what we're fighting with. And we need your input to make it work. My other question to you is inclusivity and special needs advocate. What do you mean by that? You call, do you, cons, you, you call yourself the inclusivity and special needs advocate. Yeah, you know, I, that's the one thing about this race that's different from all the rest of the people that are running. Um, I, I spent many years working in the Special Needs Advisory Board. I am an autistic adult myself, so I'm breaking strides here by but not only talking and by saying I'm running and by wanting to represent our town. There's There's been doctors and neuro, neuro, neurologists, neurologists, there you go, see, neurologists who have said, you know, you can't do these kind of things, to, not just to me, but other adults like myself. And then my two children, I, I am a single father of two children with special needs. They also both have autism. One has epilepsy. And, and that's why we're here in this area. That's why we moved here, because the resources are here, because the people who care about them are here. The special needs school, the South Florida Autism Charter School, built right across the bridge from us, is a state-of-the-art facility that has helped so many children with autism break barriers. And, uh, you know, everyone's always told me, well, you need to be more involved. So I, I did. I got involved with the Special Needs Board. I've been involved with Autism Society of Florida. I just got done doing a gala with Autism Speaks. They are in the process of possibly considering putting me on their executive leader board. It's going to be brought up at the next meeting. I don't know. I have to wait to see what happens. But they've, they've all asked me, like, can you help us? It's amazing to see an adult like yourself because everyone asks, well, how did you, how did you accomplish this? Through therapy, through medication? 
Guess what? No, neither. Uh, just like the great Temple Grandin, who is well known in the autism world, I didn't have any real resources for what my problems were. Uh, in fact, my family didn't even really know it, or they kind of knew something, but they didn't even know it until my children were born with autism. And then I went and got diagnosed, and they said, well, you, you definitely have what is known as Asperger's. Now it's considered autism. And because of my ADHD, so I got diagnosed with Asperger's, which now is considered autism. And I've also been diagnosed with ADHD, which now is considered with autism to be AUDHD. It's a conflicting neurological issue. You know, but here I am. I've made it work. I've been working with my children. The school works with my children. The board I've been a member of, we've, we were just in our last year raised $32,000 for special needs programs in, in Miami Lakes alone, in Miami Lakes. Wow. And we offer, you know, our, our board has put together programs like Arts for Autism. It's partnerships with all these, these organizations, nonprofits in our community who want to do something special for our families, our children, our adults, our elderly. We've put together programs with them, with programs with a new uh, dojo program that's offering karate, non-contact karate for people with special needs. And we've also, you know, we've been working on an adult animation class. It would be the first one of its kind where adults with autism and special needs can go and learn how to do animation with computers. Wow. So I, it, advocacy is in my blood. So my last question to you is, and this one I, I want to throw at you. Sorry to have to put you in a tough spot here. That's okay. If you had to go bold in the town of Miami Lakes, bold, which is going to be like make you like – the legacy. This is like what I call the legacy here. What is the one thing you would go bold with that you'd be like, B-O-L-D, like you want to do if you become the next console? And, and by the way, I am endorsing this gentleman right over here, Mr. John Roger, because I went to the debate that, that's narrated by Alex Pinellas, former mayor of Miami-Dade County. And I can honestly tell you, I felt the vibe, the energy, your vibe, it was all positive. I just felt like you were very sincere. I felt that sincere energy from you. You were true. I don't see you like you weren't acting. You're not fake, man. No. And, 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 and I mean, I'm not a town of Miami Lakes resident, but if, if I was, and by the way, just for the record, I grew up in East Hialeah. But I used to always come to Miami Lakes to hang out. I always had connections. Like I had people that I knew, family living in the town of Miami Lakes and, he, and Palm Springs North, Lakes on the Green. And I have a feel for this town. I have a history with this town. Mr. John Roger, you are sincere, man. Now, with that said and done, you if you become the next, and again, you might be the next council member, what are you going to go like what bold thing would you go with? If I had to go bold, first, let me thank you for those kind words. Um, honesty, integrity, respect. Those are things that I hold very true to, to my heart. I'm an Eagle Scout. I was raised on those things, you know, and when I grew up and I would, when I shook somebody's hand and I told them I was going to do something, I did it. And if I couldn't do it, I showed them the very reasons why it couldn't be done and asked for help to make it happen. So when I tell you I'm going to do something, I mean it. And if I have to go bold, I would tell you the one thing that everyone in this town has been complaining or talking about, having an issue with, they don't know what exactly to do with, has been Optimus Park. Um, there's people who use the park, and it needs to get uh, it needs to get fixed. It is a little out of date, and there's a lot of great activities that take that take place at Optimus Park. But the problem is, the ideas to improve it need a bond. And the people in this in this area, we don't want to we don't want to spend the money. I mean, and I, again, I brought this up during the debate. I don't know why we need to. For the years that I lived in Missouri, there is a town, and I'm you can look this up, town of Warsaw, Missouri. They have revitalized their parks, their sidewalks, their trails. They became a, a well known trail place in the state, and all of it through grants. Now, these people have been writing grants. They go after every grant they can find, and like 60 to 70% of all the work they did in their town was grants. So between grants, sponsorships, donations, Miami-Dade County, you know, there's a lot of people that use that park for baseball games that don't come from Miami. They're not from Miami Lakes. 
Why can't the county throw a, throw a few dollars in there? You know, optimists, they could throw a few dollars. The school who apparently owns the land, maybe maybe, maybe the county schools could help us out a little bit because we're going to be utilizing this for students. Some nonprofits too. Nonprofits too. Together yeah. we can come up with all the money we need. Let's get this place revitalized without raising a single dollar on a bond. How much money do you think it will require for this to be done? Do you have any estimate? Do you have an estimate? I don't. And the reason why I don't is because all the studies that have been done have been done for luxury improvements or just minor improvements or how much the bond is going to be, the expense is going to be. And you know everything's gone up. In the last year, it's all gone up. In my opinion, we need to sit down and start all over again and say, here's what we need to have done. This is the imperative part, fixing the flooding issues, putting in proper bathrooms, maybe rearranging it a bit, changing out the lights to LED so we're not spending so much money on the lights. Put those in the priority and get a total for that. Then let's go out and get the money raised and get that fixed. And then we can come back if we want to and say, what can we flash it up with? You want to flash it up? No problem. But the imperative parts have to be fixed first. And we can do this without asking the taxpayers to put money into it. Mr. John Roger, candidate for town council seat six. This is Alexander Newshow. Catch this video. This is pre recorded. Catch this video on the Alexander News Show YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications on YouTube. It's also going to be put on the other social media platforms. And it's also going to be on the, on the Alexander News Show podcast platforms, mainly iHeart Podcast Network, Spotify, and there's other ones like Google. Thank you for. Coming on the Alexander News Show. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us and letting the folks in Miami Lakes know a little bit about me. I know I'm the newcomer here. I'm the grassroots guy. But let me tell you, you will not be disappointed if you vote for me. Number 74. There you there you go. Number 74. What's the website again? VoteJohnRoger.com. And all of my social media is at John the Roger. And you'll be catching this video on the platforms. Thank you for tuning in to the Alexander News Show and the interview with Mr. John Roger, candidate for Town Council Seat 6. Thank you for watching.